Feature selection is a process of reducing the number of input variables when developing a predictive model. It's desirable to reduce the number of input variables to both reduce the computational cost of modeling and, in many cases, to improve the performance of the model. Statistical-based feature selection methods involve evaluating the relationship between each input variable and the target variable using statistics and selecting input variables that have the strongest relationship with the target variable. These methods can be fast and effective, although the choice of statistical measures depends on the data type of both the input and the output variables. Therefore, it can be challenging for machine learning engineers to select the appropriate statistical measure for a data set when performing filter-based measure selection. In this lesson and the next few, you're going to discover how to choose statistical measure for filter-based feature selection with numerical and categorical data. So here's what we want to accomplish in the next few lessons. There are two main types of feature selection techniques, unsupervised and supervised. And supervised methods can be further divided into wrapper, filter, and intrinsic methods. Filter-based feature selection methods use statistical measures to score the correlation and dependence between input variables that can be filtered to choose the most relevant feature. And then thirdly, we want to learn about the statistical measures for feature selection. It must be carefully chosen based on the data type and the input variable and the output response variable. Feature selection methods are intended to reduce the number of input variables to those that are believed to be the most useful to the model in order to predict the target variable. Some predictive modeling problems have a large number of variables that can slow the development and the training of the models and require large amounts of system memory. Additionally, the performance of the models can degrade when including input variables that are not relevant to the target variable. One way to think about feature selection methods are in terms of supervised and unsupervised methods. The difference has to do with whether features are selected based on the target variable or not. In unsupervised selection, they do not use a target variable. In supervised selection, they use a target variable. Unsupervised feature selection techniques ignore the target variable, such as methods that remove redundant variables using correlation or features that have a few or low variance. Supervised selection techniques use a target variable, such as methods that remove irrelevant variables. Supervised selection methods may further be classified into three groups, including intrinsic, wrapper, and filler methods. Let's go ahead and define the three. So for intrinsic, these are algorithms that perform automatic feature selection during training. Filter methods select subsets of features based on the relationship with the target variable, and then there are wrapper methods. These search subsets of features that perform according to a predictive model. Wrapper feature selection methods create many models with different subsets of input features and select those features that result in the best performing model according to the performance metric. These methods are uncovered with the variable types, although they can be computationally expensive. Filter feature selection methods use statistical techniques to evaluate the relationship between each input variable and the target variable, and these scores are used as the bias to rank and choose the input variables that will be used in the model. Lastly, there are some machine learning models that perform feature selection automatically as part of learning of the model. We might refer to these techniques as intrinsic feature selection methods. These include models such as penalized regression models like lasso and decision trees, including an ensemble of decision trees like random forests. Feature selection is also related to dimensionality reduction techniques in that both approaches seek fewer input variables to the predictive model. The difference is that feature selection selects features to keep or remove from the data set, whereas dimensionality reduction create a projection of the data resulting in an entirely new input feature. Therefore, dimensionality reduction is an alternative to feature selection, rather than a type of feature selection. It's common to use correlation type statistical measures between input and output variables as the basis for filter feature selection. Therefore, the choice of statistical measures is highly dependent upon the variable data types. Common data types include numerical, such as height, and categorical, such as a label, although each may be further subdivided, such as integers and floating points for numerical variables, and booleans, ordinal, or nominal for categorical variables. Input variables are those that are provided as input to the model. In feature selection, it's this group of variables that we wish to reduce the size of. Output variables are those which the model is intended to predict, often called response variables. So we have two types of variables. The input variable. Variables use its input to the predictive model. Output variable. Variables that are output or predicted by the model. The type of response variable typically indicates the type of predictive modeling problem being performed. For example, a numerical output variable indicates a regression predictive modeling problem, and a categorical output variable indicates a classification predictive modeling problem. 
So numerical output, regression predictive modeling problem. Categorical output, classification predictive modeling problem. The statistical measures using filter-based feature selection are generally calculated one input variable at a time with a target variable. Therefore, they are referred to as univariate statistical measures. This may mean that there is an interaction between input variables that is not considered in the filtering process. We can create a visualization for this. We can consider a tree of input and output variable types and then choose statistical measurements of the relationships with the correlation designed to work with these data types. The image on screen summarizes this tree and some commonly suggested statistics to use at the leaves of this tree. Feature selection is a process of identifying and selecting a subset of input features that are most relevant to the target variable. Feature selection is often straightforward when working with real value data, such as using Pearson's correlation coefficient, but can be challenging working with categorical data. The two most commonly used feature selection methods for categorical input data when the target variable is also categorical i.e. classification predictive modeling, are the chi-squared statistic and the mutual information statistic. In this lesson, in the next few, we're going to use the breast cancer data set that's been widely studied in machine learning circles since around the 1980s. The data set classifies breast cancer patient data as either a recurrence or a non-recurrence of cancer. There are 286 examples with non-input variables. It's a binary classification problem. A naive model can achieve an accuracy of around 70% on this data set. A good score is around 76%. When you look at the data, you can see that all nine input variables are categorical. Specifically, all variables are quoted strings. Some are ordinal and some are not. We're going to load the data set into memory using the pandas library. Once loaded, we can split the columns into input and output for modeling. Lastly, we're going to force all the fields in the input data to be strings. Just in case, pandas tried to map some automatically to numbers. We can tie all this together and we're going to create a function to do just that called load data set. Once it's loaded, we can split the data into training and test sets so we can fit and evaluate our learning model. We're going to use the train test split function from the scikit-learn library and use 67% of the data for training and 33% for testing. Tying all these elements together, the complete example of loading, splitting, and summarizing the raw categorical data set is on screen. You can see that this reports the size of the input and output elements of the training and testing sets. You can also see that we have 191 examples for training and 95 for testing. Now that we're familiar with the data set, let's take a look at how we can encode it for modeling. We're going to use the ordinal encoder class from Scikit-Learn to encode each variable to integers. This is a flexible class and does allow the order of the categories to be specified as arguments if any such order is known. Don't worry too much about the ordinal encoder transform and how it works right now. We're going to explore that later in the course. Now, and I'm going to leave it to an exercise to you to update this example below to try specifying the order of those variables that have natural ordering and to see if it has any impact on model performance. The best practice when encoding variables is to fit the encoding on the training data set, then apply it to the training and test sets. We've crafted a function below called prepare inputs, and it takes the input data from the training and testing sets and encodes it using the ordinal encoder. We also need to prepare the target variable. It's a binary classification problem. So we need to map two classes to labels zero and one. This is a type of ordinal encoding, and Scikit-Learn provides the label encoder class specifically designed for this purpose. We could just as easily use the ordinal encoder and achieve the same results, although the label encoder is designed for encoding a single variable. Later on in the course, you're going to discover how these two encoders work. The prepare targets function integer encodes the output data from training to testing sets. We're going to then call these functions to prepare the data. Tying all this together, the complete example of loading and encoding the input and output variables for the breast cancer categorical data set is listed on screen. Running the example loads the data set, then splits it into training and testing sets, then encodes the categorical input and target variables. The number of input variables remains the same due to the choice of encoding. Now that we've loaded and prepared the breast cancer data set, we can explore feature selection. There are two popular feature selection techniques that can be used for categorical input data and categorical class target variables and they are the chi-squared statistic and the mutual information statistic. Notice it looks like it's chi-squared, but it's not. It's pronounced chi-squared. And I'm sure I'll mess that up throughout the course. Pearson's chi-squared statistical hypothesis test is an example of a test for independence between two categorical variables. The results of this test can be used for feature selection, where those features that are independent of the target variable can be removed from the data set. The Scikit-Learn machine learning library provides an implementation of the chi-squared test in the chi-2 function. 
This function can be used in feature selection strategies, such as the K most relevant features, the largest values, via the Select K Best class. For example, you can define the Select K Best class to use the Chi2 function and select all features, then transform the training and testing sets. You can then print the scores for each variable, largest is better, and then plot the scores for each variable as a bar graph to get an idea how many features you'd select. Tying this together with the data preparation for the breast cancer data set in the previous section is shown on screen. When we execute the code, it first prints the scores calculated for each input feature and the target variable. In this example, you can see the scores are small, and it's hard to get an idea from the number alone as to which features are most relevant. Perhaps features 3, 4, 5, and 8 are the most relevant. A bar chart of the feature important scores for each input feature can be created. This clearly shows that feature 3 might be the most relevant according to chi-squared, and perhaps four of the nine input features are the most relevant. Knowing this, we can set k to four when configuring the select k best to select the top four features. Mutual information from the field of information theory is the application of information game, typically used in the construction of decision trees for feature selection. Mutual information is calculated between two variables and measures the reduction in uncertainty for one variable given the known value of another variable. The Scikit-Learn Machine Learning Library provides an implementation of the mutual information for feature selection via the mutual info class if function. Like chi-squared, it can be used in the select k best feature selection strategy. You can perform feature selection using mutual information on the breast cancer data set and then print out and plot the scores, again larger is better, as we did in the previous section. The complete example is on screen using mutual information as a categorical feature selection technique. Executing their code first prints out the scores calculated for each input feature and the target variable. In this case, you can see that some of the features have a very low score, suggesting that they can perhaps be removed. Perhaps features 3, 2, 6, and 5 are the most relevant. We're going to create a bar chart of the feature important scores for each input feature created. Importantly, a different mixture of features is promoted. Now that we know how to perform feature selection on categorical data for classification predictive modeling problems, we can try developing a model using the selected features to compare results. There are many different techniques for scoring features and selecting features based on scores. How do you know which one to use? A robust approach is to evaluate models using different feature selection methods and numbers of features, and then select the best approach that results in a model with the best performance. We're going to evaluate a logistic regression model with all the features compared to a model built from the features selected by the chi-squared and those features selected via mutual information. Logistic regression is a good model for testing feature selection methods, as it can perform better if relevant features are removed from the model. All right, so our first step, we're going to evaluate a logistic regression model using all the available features. The model is fit on the training data set and evaluated on the test set. The complete example is on screen. When we execute our code, it prints the accuracy of the model on the training data set. In our example, you can see that the model achieves a classification accuracy of around 75%. We would prefer to use a subset of features that achieves a classification accuracy that is good or better than this. So let's go ahead and build a model using chi-squared. We can use the chi-squared test to score the features and choose four of the most relevant features. The select best function feature is updated to achieve this. The complete example for evaluating a logistic regression model fit and evaluated on data using this feature selection method is on screen. Running the example reports the performance of the model on just four of the nine input features selected using the chi-squared statistic. In this case, you can see the model achieved an accuracy of around 74%. That's a slight drop in performance. It is possible that some of the features removed are, in fact, adding value directly or in concert with other selected features. At this stage, we're probably going to prefer to use all the features. We can repeat the experiment and then select the best four features using mutual information statistics. The updated version of the select features function to achieve this is listed on screen. Executing the code fits the model in the top four selected features chosen using mutual information. In this case, you can see we have a small lift in accuracy to 76%. To be sure the effect is real, it would be a good idea to repeat each experiment multiple times and then compare the mean performance. It may also be a good idea to use k-fold cross-validation instead of a simple train test and split. Feature selection is the process of identifying and selecting a subset of input features that are most relevant to the target variable. Feature selection is often straightforward when working with real-valued input and output data, such as the Pearson's correlation coefficient. 
but can be challenging when working with numerical input data and categorical target variable. The two most commonly used feature selection methods for numerical input data when the target variable is categorical, i.e. classification predictive modeling, are the ANOVA F-test statistic and the mutual information statistic. We're going to use the same diabetes data set as the basis for this lesson. The data set was introduced in the course previously. We're going to load the data set into memory using the pandas library. Once loaded, we can split the columns into input x and the output y for modeling. We can tie all this together into a helpful function we can use later. We can call that function load data set. Once loaded, we can split the data into training and testing sets so we can fit and evaluate our learning model. We're going to use train test split function from the scikit-learn library and use 67% of the data for training and 33% for testing. Tying all these elements together, the complete example of loading, splitting, and summarizing the raw categorical data set is listed on screen. For an example, reports the size of the input and output elements of the training and testing sets. We can see that we have 514 examples for the training and 240 for testing. Now that we've loaded and prepared the diabetes data set, we can explore feature selection. There are two popular feature selection techniques that can be used for numerical input data and categorical class target variables. They are the ANOVA F statistic and mutual information statistics. Let's take a closer look at each of these. ANOVA is an acronym and it stands for analysis of variance and is a parametric statistical hypothesis test for determining whether the means from two or more samples of data, often three or more, come from the same distribution or not. An F statistic or an F test is a class of statistical tests that calculate the ratio between variance values, such as the variance from two different samples or the explained or unexplained variance by the statistical test, like an ANOVA. The ANOVA method is a type of F statistic, referred here to as the ANOVA F test. Importantly, ANOVA is used when one variable is numeric and one is categorical, such as numerical input variables and a classification target variable in a classification task. The result of this test can be used for feature selection, where those features that are independent of the target variable can be removed from the data set. The scikit-learn machine learning library provides an implementation of the ANOVA F test in the F class F function. This function can be used in feature selection strategies, such as selecting the top K most relevant features, the largest values, via the select K best class. For example, we could define a select K best class to use the F class F function and select all features, then transform it on the training and testing sets. We can then print the scores for each variable, again the larger is better, and plot the scores for each variable as a bar graph to get an idea of how many features we should choose. We could tie all this together with the data preparation for the diabetes data set in the previous section. The complete example is listed on screen. Running the example first prints the scores calculated for each input feature and the target variable. In this case, you can see that some features stand out as perhaps being more relevant than others with much larger test statistic values. Perhaps features one, five, and seven are the most relevant. A bar chart of feature important scores for each input feature is created. Our chart clearly shows that feature one might be the most relevant, according to this statistic test, in that perhaps six of the eight input features are most relevant. Therefore, we can set K to six when configuring the select K best to select these features. Mutual information from the field of information theory is the application of information gain typically used in the construction of decision trees for feature selection. Mutual information is calculated between two variables and measures the reduction in uncertainty from one variable given a known value of the other variable. Mutual information is straightforward when considering the distribution of two discrete categorical or ordinal variables, such as categorical input and categorical output data. Therefore, it can be adapted for use with numerical input and categorical data. The scikit-learn machine learning library provides an implementation of the mutual information for feature selection with numeric input and categorical output variables via the mutual underscore info underscore class if function. Like the f class if function, it can be used in the select k best feature selection strategy. It can perform feature selection using mutual information on the diabetes data set and then print and plot out the scores. Again, larger is better, as we did in the previous lessons. The complete example of using mutual information for numerical feature selection is shown on screen. When we execute the code, it first prints out the scores calculated for each input feature and the target variable. In this example, you can see that some of the features have modestly low scores, suggesting that perhaps they can be removed. Perhaps features 1 and 5 are the most relevant. A bar chart of the feature important scores is created for each input feature. Importantly, a different mixture of features is promoted. All right, now that we know how to perform feature selection on numerical input data for classification predictive modeling, 
we can try developing a model using the selected features and then compare the results. There are many different techniques for scoring features and selecting features based on scores. But how do you know which one to choose? A smart approach is to evaluate models using different feature selection methods and number of features, and then select the best method that results in a model with the best performance. On our first model build, we're going to evaluate a logistic regression model using all the available features. This is going to act as our baseline. The model is fit on the training dataset and evaluated on the test dataset. Executing the code prints the accuracy of the model on the training dataset. In this example, you can see that the model achieves a classification accuracy of around 77%. We would prefer that a subset of features that achieves a classification accuracy is good or better than this compared to our baseline. Next up, we can use the ANOVA F test to score the features and then select the four most relevant features. The select features function on screen is updated to achieve this. Running the code reports the performance of the model on just four of the eight input features selected using the ANOVA F test statistic. In this case, you can see the model achieved an accuracy of around 78.74%, a lift in performance compared to the baseline. We can repeat this experiment and select the top four features using the mutual information statistic. When you execute the code, it fits the model on the top four features selected using mutual information. In this case, you can see that there's no difference compared to the baseline model. This is interesting because we know the method shows a different four features compared to the previous method. In the previous examples, we selected four features. But how do we know these are the best four features to select? Instead of guessing, we can systematically test a range of different numbers of selected features and then discover the results in the best performing model. This is called a grid search where the K argument to the select K best class can be tuned. It's good practice to evaluate your model on a classification task using repeated stratifold K-fold cross-validation. In this example, you're going to use three repeats of 10-fold cross-validation via the repeated stratified K-fold class. You can define a pipeline that correctly prepares the feature selection transform on the training set and applies it to the train set and the test set for each fold in cross-validation. In this case, you're going to use the ANOVA F test statistical method for selecting features. You can define a grid of values to evaluate from 1 to 8. Note that the grid is a dictionary that maps parameter names to values to be searched. Given that we're going to use a pipeline, you can use the select K best object via the name we gave it, ANOVA, and then select the parameter K separated by two underscores or ANOVA underscore underscore K. Running the example grid searches different numbers of selected features using the ANOVA F test where each modeling pipeline is evaluated using repeated cross-validation. In this example, you can see the best number of selected features is 7 that achieves an accuracy of around 77%. Now, you might want to see the relationship between the number of selected features and the classification accuracy. In this relationship, you may expect that more features results in better performance to a point. This relationship can be explored by manually evaluating each configuration of K for the select K best from 1 to 8 gathering the sample of accuracy scores, and then plotting results using a box and whiskers plot side by side. The spread and mean of these box plots would be expected to show any interesting relationship between the number of selected features and the classification accuracy of the pipeline. When you execute this code, it first reports the mean and standard deviation accuracy for each number of selected features. In this case, it looks like selecting five or seven features results in roughly the same accuracy. Box and whiskers plots are created side by side, showing the trend of increasing mean accuracy, with the number of selected features to five features, after which it may become less stable. So, choosing five features might be appropriate configuration for this model. In this lesson and the next few, we're going to learn how to select features for numerical outputs. Feature selection is the process of identifying and selecting a subset of input variables that are most relevant to the target variable. Perhaps the simplest case of feature selection is the case where there are numerical input variables and a numerical target for a regression predictive modeling. This is because the strength of the relationship between the input variable and the target variable can be calculated, called correlation, and compared relative to each other. In this lesson, and perhaps the next few, we're going to use a synthetic regression data set as a basis for our lessons. We call that a regression problem is a problem in which we want to predict a numerical value. In this case, you require a data set that also has numerical input variables. The make regression function from the scikit-learn library can be used to define a data set. It provides control over the number of samples, the number of input features, and importantly, the number of relevant and irrelevant input features. This is crucial because we specifically desire a data set that we know has irrelevant input features. In this case, you're going to define a data set with a thousand samples, 
each with 100 input features, and 10 are informative, and the remaining 90 are irrelevant. The hope is the feature selection techniques can identify some or almost all the features that are relevant to the target, or at the very least, identify and remove the irrelevant features. Once defined, you can split the data into training and testing sets so you can fit and evaluate your predictive modeling problem. You're going to use the train test split function from the scikit-learn library, and you're going to use 67% of the data for training and 33% for testing. Tying all these elements together, the complete example of defining, splitting, and summarizing the raw regression data set is listed on screen. When you execute the code, it reports the size of the input elements and the training and testing sets. You can see that you have 670 examples for training and 330 for testing. Now that we've loaded and prepared the data set, next we can explore feature selection. There are two popular feature selection techniques that can be used for numerical input data and a numerical target variable, and they are correlation statistics and mutual information statistics. Correlation is a measure of how two variables change together. Perhaps the most common correlation measure is Pearson's correlation that assumes a Gaussian distribution to each variable and then reports a linear relationship. Linear correlation scores are typically a value between negative 1 and 1 with a zero representing no relationship. For feature selection, scores are made positive, and we're interested in a positive score with a larger positive value, the larger the relationship, and the more likely the feature should be selected for modeling. Therefore, the linear correlation can be converted into a correlation statistic with only positive values. The Scikit-Learn machine learning library provides an implementation of the correlation statistic in the F underscore regression function. This function can be used in feature selection strategies such as selecting the K top most relevant features, the largest values, via the Select KBest class. For example, you can define the Select KBest class to use the F regression function and then select all features and then transform the training and testing sets. You can then print the scores for each variable, again, larger is better, and then plot the scores for each variable as a bar graph to get an idea of how many features you should choose. Tying this together with the data preparation for the data set in the previous lesson, the complete example is listed on screen. Running the code first prints the scores calculated for each input feature and the target variable. You can see that some variables have larger scores than others, i.e. less than 1 versus 5, and others have a much larger score, such as features 9, that is a 101. A bar chart of the feature important scores for each input feature is created. The plot clearly shows 8 to 10 features are a lot more important than the other features. We could set K to 10 when configuring the Select K best to select the top features. Mutual information from the field of information theory is the application of information gain, typically used in the construction of decision trees, for feature selection. Mutual information is calculated between two variables and measures the reduction in uncertainty for one variable, given a known value for the other variable. Mutual information is straightforward when considering the distribution of two discrete, categorical or ordinal variables, such as categorical input and categorical output data. Nevertheless, it can be adapted for use with numerical input and output data. The Scikit Machine Learning Library provides an implementation of mutual information for feature selection with numeric input and output variables via the mutual underscore info underscore regression function. Like the F underscore regression function, it can be used in the Select K Best Feature Strategy. You can perform feature selection using mutual information on the data set and then print out and plot the scores, larger is better, as we did in the previous lessons. The complete example with Mutual information for numerical features is listed on screen. Executing the code first prints the scores calculated for each input feature and the target variable. Like we did in the previous lesson, you can view a list of scores for all 100 input variables. You can again see that many features have a score of 0, 0.0, whereas this technique has identified many more features that may be relevant to the target variable. A bar chart of feature important scores for each input feature is created. Compared to the correlation feature selection method, we can clearly see more features scored as being relevant. Now, this may be because of the statistical noise that we added to the data set in this construction. All right, now that we know how to perform feature selection on numerical input data for a regression predictive modeling problem, we can try developing a model using the selected features and then compare the results. All right, the first thing we're gonna do is create our baseline. We're gonna evaluate a linear regression model using the available features. The model is fit in the training data set and evaluated on the test data set. The complete example is listed on screen. Running an example prints the mean absolute error, or MAE, of the model in the training data set. In this case, we can see that the model achieves an error of around 0.086. We would prefer to use a subset of features that achieves an error that is good or better than this. All right, now we're going to build our model using the correlation features. 
We can use the correlation method to score the features and select the 10 most relevant ones. The select underscore features function on screen achieves this. Running the code reports the performance of the model on just 10 of the 100 input features selected using the correlation statistic. In this example, you can see that the model achieved an error score of about 2.7, which is much larger than the baseline model used on all the features that achieved a 0.086. This suggests that although the method has a strong idea of what features to select, building the model from these features alone does not result in the most skillful model. This could be because features that are important to the target variable are being left out, meaning that the method is being deceived about what's important. Let's go the other way and try to use a method to remove the irrelevant features rather than all the relevant features. We can do this by setting the number of selected features to a much higher value, in this case 88, hoping it can find and discard 12 of the 90 irrelevant features. The code for that is on screen. Executing the code reports the performance of the model of 88 out of 100 input features selected using the correlation statistic. In this example, you can see that removing some of the irrelevant features has resulted in a small lift in performance with an error of about 0.085 compared to the baseline that achieved an error of about 0.086. All right, next let's use a model building the mutual information features. We're going to repeat the experiment and select the top 88 features using mutual information statistics. The updated version of the select underscore features function to achieve this is listed on screen. Again, we're going to use mutual information here for feature selection to fit a linear regression model. When we execute the code, it fits the model to the top 88 features chosen using mutual information. In this case, you can see further reduction in error as compared to the correlation statistic, achieving an MAE of about 0.084 compared to the 0.085 in the previous lesson. In the previous lesson, we selected 88 features, but how do we know these are good or even the best results for this problem? Instead of guessing, we can systematically test a range of different numbers of selected features and then discover which results are the best performing model. This is called a grid search, where the K argument to the select K best class can be tuned. It's a good practice to evaluate model configurations on regression tasks using the k-fold cross-validation, which is considered the gold standard. We're going to use three repeats on the 10-fold cross-validation via the repeated k-fold class. You're going to define a pipeline that correctly prepares the feature selection transforms on the training set, and then applies it to the training set and the test set for each fold of the cross-validation. In this case, you're going to use mutual information statistic method for selecting the features. We can then define a grid of the number of features to consider from 80 to 100. Note that a grid is a dictionary of mapping to parameter to values to search. And given that we're using a pipeline, we can access the select K best object via the name we give it as SEL, and then use a parameter K separated by two underscores. We can then define and run the search. In this case, we're going to evaluate the model using the negative mean absolute error, or N underscore mean underscore absolute underscore error. It's negative because scikit-learn requires the scores to be maximized, so the MAE is made negative, meaning the score scales from infinity to zero. Executing the code runs the grid searches on different numbers of selected features using mutual information statistics, where each modeling pipeline is evaluated using the repeated cross-validation. In this example, you can see the best number of selected features is 81, which achieves an MAE of about 0.082. You might want to see the relationship between the number of selected features and the MAE. In this relationship, you may expect that more features will result in better performance, to a point. The relationship can be explored by manually evaluating and configuring the K for the select K best from 81 to 100, gathering the sample MAE scores, and then plotting the results using a box and whiskers plot. The spread and mean of these box plots would be expected to show an interesting relationship between the number of selected features in the MEA of the pipeline. Note that you started with the spread of K values at 81 instead of 80, because the distribution of MAE scores from K to 80 is dramatically larger than all the other values of K considered, and it washed out the plot of the results on the graph. The complete example for achieving this is on screen. Running the code first reports the mean and standard deviation, the MAE for each number of selected features. In this example, reporting the mean and standard deviation of MAE is not very interesting other that the K in the 80s appears to be better than those in the 90s. Again, we've got our box and whiskers plot side by side, showing the trend of K versus MAE, where the green triangle represents the mean and the orange line represents the median of the distribution. All right, in this lesson and perhaps the next few, we're going to talk about recursive feature elimination, or RFE for short. RFE is popular because it's easy to configure and use. 
and because it's effective at selecting those features, columns, and a training data set that are more or most relevant in predicting the target variable. There are two important configuration options when using RFE, the choice of the number of features to select and the choice of the model used to help choose the features. Both of these hyperparameters can be explored. Recursive Feature Elimination, or RFE for short, is a feature selection algorithm. A machine learning data set for classification or regression is comprised of rows and columns, like a spreadsheet. Rows are often referred to as instances, and columns are often referred to as features, i.e., features of an observation in the problem domain. Feature selection refers to techniques that select a subset of the most relevant features, columns, for a data set. Fewer features can allow machine learning models to run more efficiently, less space and time complexity, and can be more effective. Some machine learning models can be misled by irrelevant input features, resulting in worse predictive performance. RFE is a wrapper type feature selection model. This means that a different machine learning model is given and used as a core method, wrapped by RFE, and then used to help select features. Now, this is in contrast to filter-based feature selections that score each feature and then select the best features with the largest or smallest scores. Technically, RFE is a wrapper-style feature selection model that also uses filter feature selection internally. RFE works by searching a subset of features by starting with all the features in the training dataset and then successfully removing features until the desired number remains. This is achieved by fitting a given machine learning algorithm used of the core model, ranking features of importance, discarding the least important features, and then refitting that model. This process is then repeated until a specified number of features remains. Features are scored either using the provided machine learning model, i.e. some algorithms like decision trees offer important scores, or by using statistical methods. All right, so now that we have a fundamental understanding of the RFE procedure, let's review how we can use it in our projects. The scikit-learn machine learning library provides an implementation of RFE for machine learning via the RFE class in scikit-learn. RFE is a transform. To use it, first, the class is configured with the chosen algorithm specified via the estimator argument, and then the number of features to select via the end features to select argument. RFE requires a nested algorithm that is used to provide the feature importance scores, such as a decision tree. The nested algorithm used in RFE does not have to be an algorithm that is fit on the selected features. Different algorithms can be used. Once configured, the class must be fit on the training dataset to select the features by calling the fit function. After the class is fit, the choice of input variables can be seen via the support attribute that provides a true or false for each input variable. It can then be applied to the training and testing data sets by calling the transform function. It's common to use k-fold cross-validation to evaluate a machine learning model on a data set. When using k-fold cross-validation, it's a good practice to perform data transforms like RFE as part of a pipeline to avoid data leakage. Now that you're familiar with the RFE API, Let's take a look at how to develop an RFE for both classification and regression. Let's go ahead and do classification first. All right, the first thing we're going to do is use the make classification function to create a synthetic binary classification problem with a thousand examples and 10 input features, five of which are informative and five of which are redundant. Running the example creates a data set and summarizes the shape of the input and output components. Next, you could evaluate the RFE feature selection algorithm on this data set. We're going to use a decision tree classifier to choose features and then set the number of features to five. You're then going to fit the decision tree classifier model on the selected features. You're going to evaluate the model using repeated k-fold cross-validation with three repeats and 10 folds. You're then going to report the mean and standard deviation of the accuracy of the models across all the repeats and all the folds. Executing the code reports the mean and standard deviation accuracy of the model. In this case, you can see that the RFE that uses the decision tree and then fits a decision tree on the selected features achieves a classification accuracy of 88.6%. You can also use the RFE model pipeline as a final model and make predictions for classification. First, the RFE model is fit on all of the available data, and then the predict function can be called in order to make predictions on new data. The example for this is seen on screen. When we execute this, it fits the RFE pipeline on the entire data set, and then it's used to make a prediction on the new row as you might do when using a model in an application. Now that we are familiar with RFE for classification, let's go ahead and look at a regression problem. All right, next up, let's take a look at RFE for a regression problem. First, you can use the make regression function to create a synthetic regression problem with a thousand examples and 10 input features, five of which are important and five of which are redundant. 
executing the code creates the data set and summarizes the shape of the input and output components. Next, we can evaluate an RFE algorithm on this data set, as we did in the last lessons. We can evaluate the pipeline with the decision tree using the repeated k-fold cross-validation with three repeats and 10 folds. We're going to report the MAE, or the mean absolute error, of the model across all the repeats and folds. The scikit-learn library makes the MAE negative so that it's maximized instead of minimized. This means that negative MAE values closer to zero or better, and a perfect score in the model is an MAE of zero. Executing the code reports the mean and standard deviation accuracy of the model. In this case, we can see that the RFE pipeline with the decision tree model achieves an MAE of around 26. We can also use the RFE as part of the final model and make predictions for regression. For example, the pipeline is fit on all available data. Then the predict function can be called to make predictions on new data. The example on screen demonstrates our regression data set. Executing the code fits the RFE pipeline on the entire data set, and then it's used to make a prediction on a new row of data, as we might do in a machine learning application. All right, now you're familiar with using the scikit-learn API to evaluate and use RFE for feature selection. Let's look at configuring the model. All right, let's take a look at RFE hyperparameters. An important hyperparameter for an RFE algorithm is the number of features to select. In the previous lesson, we used an arbitrary number of selected features, five, which matches the number of informative features in the synthetic data set. In practice, we cannot know how many best features to select with RFE. Instead, it's a good practice to test different values. In our example on screen, we're selecting different features from 2 to 10 on the synthetic binary classification data set. Running the code first prints the mean accuracy for each configured number of input features. In this case, you can see the performance improves as the number of features increases and perhaps to a peak of four to seven, as we might expect, given that there are only five features relevant to the target variable. We've also created a box and whiskers plot for the distribution of accuracy scores for each configured number of features. It's also possible to automatically select a number of features chosen by RFE. This can be achieved by performing cross-validation of different numbers of features, as we did in the previous lessons, and then automatically selecting the number of features that resulted in the best score. The RFE CV class implements this. This class is configured just like the RFE class regarding the choice of algorithm that is wrapped. Additionally, the minimum number of features to be considered can be specified via the min features to select argument, defaults to one. And we can also specify the type of cross-validation and scoring to use via the CV, which defaults to five in the scoring argument, which uses classification accuracy. We're going to demonstrate this on a synthetic binary classification problem and then use RFE CV and our pipeline instead of RFE to automatically choose the number of selected features. When we execute the code, our example on screen reports the mean and standard deviation accuracy of the model. In this example, we can see that RFE that uses a decision tree and automatically selects a number of features and then fits a decision tree on the selected features achieves a classification accuracy of around 88.6%, which is really good. When using RFE, we may be interested to know which features were selected and which ones were removed. This can be achieved by reviewing the attribute to fit the RFE object or fit the RFE CV object. The support underscore attribute reports true or false as to which features in an order column of the index were included, and the ranking underscore attribute reports the relative ranking of the features in the same order. The example on screen fits the RFE model on the entire data set and then selects five features, and then it reports each feature column index from zero to nine, whether it was selected or not, which are just true or false and the relative feature ranking. When we execute the code, we see a list of 10 input features and whether or not they were selected, as well as their relative ranking of importance. There are many algorithms that can be used in the core RFE, as long as they provide some indication and variable importance. Most decision tree models are likely to report the same general trends and feature importance, but it's not guaranteed. It might be helpful to explore how to use different algorithms wrapped by RFE. And our example on screen does just that. Running our code first reports the mean accuracy for each wrapped model. In our example, the results suggest that linear algorithms like logistic regression and the perceptron might select better features more reliably than the chosen decision trees on ensemble of decision tree models. A box and whiskers plot is created for the distribution of accuracy scores for each configured wrapped model. We can see a general trend of good performance with logistic regression, CARD and perhaps GBM. This highlights that even though the actual model used to fit the chosen features is the same in each case, the model used with RFE can make an important difference to which features are selected and in turn the performance of the prediction problem. 
Feature importance refers to a classification of techniques for assigning scores to input features to a predictive model that indicates the relative importance of each feature when making a prediction. Feature importance scores can be calculated for problems that involve predicting a numerical value, called regression, and those problems that involve predicting a class label, called classification. The scores are useful and can be used in a range of situations in predictive modeling problems, such as a better understanding of the data, a better understanding of the model, and reducing the number of input features. Feature important scores can provide insight into the data set. The relative scores can highlight which features will be the most important to target, and the converse, which ones will be the least relevant. This may be interpreted by a domain expert and can be used for the basis of gathering more and different data. Feature important scores can provide insight into the model. Most feature important scores are calculated by a predictive model that has been fit on the data set. Inspecting the important scores provides insight into that specific model and which features will be the most important and least important to the model when making a prediction. Feature importance can be used to improve a predictive model. This can be achieved by using the important scores to select those features to delete, the lowest scores, and those features to keep, the highest scores. This is a type of feature selection that can simplify the problem that is being modeled, speed up the modeling process, deleting features is called dimensionality reduction, and in some cases, improve the performance of the model. Feature important scores can be fed to a wrapper model, such as a select from model class to perform feature selection. Each feature importance technique has the potential to rank the importance of input features differently, creating a different view of the data. There's no best feature importance technique. If your goal is to find a subset of input features that result in the best model performance, then a suite of different feature selection techniques should be tried, including different feature importance scores. There are many ways to calculate feature importance scores and many models you can be used for this purpose. In this lesson and in the next few, we're going to look at three main types of how to use advanced feature importance, and they are feature importance from model coefficients, feature importance from decision trees, and lastly, feature importance from permutation testing. All right, before we dive in, let's define some data sets that we can use for the basis of demonstrating and exploring feature importance scores. Each test problem has five informative and five uninformative features, and it's going to be interesting to see which models are consistent at finding and differentiating the features based on their importance scores. Again, we're going to use the make classification function to create a test binary classification data set. The data set's going to have a thousand examples with 10 input features. Five of those will be informative and the remaining will be redundant. We're going to fix a random number seed to ensure we get the same results each time we execute the code. On screen is our code and executing it creates the data set and confirms the expected number of samples and features. Next up, we're also going to use a regression data set. We're going to use the make regression function to create a test regression data set. Like the classification data set, the regression data set will have 1,000 examples with 10 input features, five of which will be informative, and the remaining five will be redundant. Again, we're going to run our code, and this confirms the expected number of samples and features. Linear machine learning algorithms fit a model where the prediction is weighted some of the input values. Examples include linear regression, logistic regression, and extensions that add regularization, such as ridge regression, lasso, and the elastic net. All of these models find a set of coefficients to use in the weighted sum in order to make a prediction. These coefficients can be used directly as a crude type of feature importance score. Let's take a closer look at using the coefficients as important scores for classification and regression. We're going to fit the model in the data set to find the coefficients. Then we're going to summarize the important scores for each input feature. And then lastly, we're going to create a bar chart to get an idea of the relative importance of the features. We can fit a linear regression model in the regression data set and retrieve the COF property that contains the coefficients found for each input variable. These coefficients can provide a basis for a crude feature importance score. This assumes the input variables have the same scale or all have been scaled prior to fitting the model. Our complete example for this linear regression problem for linear regression coefficients for feature importance is on screen. When we execute the code, you can see that the models found five important features and marked all the others with a zero coefficient, essentially removing them from the model. A bar chart is also created for the important scores. This approach can be used with ridge, lasso, and elastic net models from scikit-learn. You can fit a logistic regression model on the data set and then retrieve the COF property that contains the coefficients found for each input variable. These coefficients can provide the basis for accrued feature importance scores. This assumes that the input variables have the same scale or have been scaled prior to fitting the model. The complete logistic regression coefficients for feature importance scores is listed on screen. Running the code first fits the model, then reports the coefficient value for each feature. 
This is a classification problem with classes of 0 and 1. Notice that the coefficients are both positive and negative. The positive scores indicate a feature that predicts class 1, whereas the negative scores indicate a feature that predicts class 0. No clear pattern of important or unimportant features can be identified from these results, at least from what we can see. Nevertheless, this technique may provide insight onto your binary classification data set. A bar chart is also created for feature important scores for this problem. All right, now that we've seen the use of coefficients as important scores, let's look at more common examples of decision trees for important scores. Decision tree algorithms like classification and regression, shortened for CART, offer important scores based on the reduction in the criteria used to split the points, like Gini or Entropy. The same approach can be used for ensembles of decision trees, such as random forest and stochastic gradient boosting algorithms. Let's take a look at a few. You can use the CART algorithm for feature importance implemented in scikit-learn as the decision tree regressor and the decision tree classifier classes. After being fit, the model provides a feature importance score property that can be accessed to retrieve the relative importance scores for each input feature. All right, let's take a look at an example for regression and for classification. The first you can see we're going to take a look at a regression one. The complete example for fitting a decision tree regressor and summarizing the calculated feature importance is listed on screen. When we execute the code, it fits the model. Then it reports the coefficient value for each feature. The results suggest that three of the 10 features as being important for the prediction. Again, a bar chart is created for feature importance scores. All right, now let's work through a decision tree classifier. The complete example for fitting a decision tree classifier and summarizing the calculated feature importance scores is listed on screen. Executing the code, it fits the model, then reports the coefficient value for each feature. The output suggests that perhaps four of the 10 features as being important for the prediction. Again, we've created a bar chart for the feature important scores. You can use a random forest algorithm for feature importance implemented in scikit-learn as the random forest regressor and the random forest classifier classes. After being fit, the model provides a feature importance property that can be accessed to retrieve the relative importance scores for each input feature. The approach can be used with bagging and extra tree algorithms. Let's go ahead and take a look at an example for regression and classification. The complete example for fitting a random forest regressor and then summarizing the calculated feature important scores is listed on screen. Executing the code first fits the model, then reports the coefficient value for each feature. The results suggest that perhaps two or three of the 10 features as being important to the prediction. Again, a bar chart is created for feature important scores. All right, let's do a random forest classification feature importance example. The complete example for fitting a random forest classifier and then for summarizing the Calculated feature important scores is listed on screen. Executing the code first fits the model, then reports the coefficient for each feature. These results perhaps suggest that two of the 10 features as being less important to the prediction. Again, we've created a bar chart for feature important scores. Permutation feature importance is a technique for calculating relative importance scores that are independent of the model used. First, a model is fit on the data set, such as a model that does not support naive feature importance scores. Then the model is used to make predictions on the data set. Although the values of the feature, the columns in the data set are scrambled. This is repeated for each feature in the data set. Then this whole process is repeated three, five, 10 or more times. The result is a mean importance score for each input feature and a distribution of scores given the repeats. This approach can be used for regression or classification and requires that a performance metric be chosen as the basis of the important scores, such as mean squared error for regression or accuracy for classification. Permutation feature selection can be used via the permutation importance function that takes a fit model, a data set, a train or test data set is fine, and then a scoring function. Let's take a look at this approach to feature selection with a model that does not support feature selection natively, specifically k nearest neighbors. The complete example on the screen of fitting a k nearest neighbors regressor and then summarizing the calculated permutation feature importance scores is shown. Running the code first fits the model, then it reports the coefficient values for each feature. The results suggest that perhaps two or three of the 10 features has been important to the prediction. Again, a bar chart is created for feature importance scores. All right, now let's work through one with classification. The complete example for fitting a k nearest neighbors classifier and then summarizing the calculated permutation feature importance scores is listed on screen. Running an example fits the model, then reports the coefficient value for each feature. The results here suggest that perhaps two or three of the 10 features is being important to the prediction. Again, we're gonna create a bar chart for feature important scores to get a visual representation of what we're doing. Feature important scores can be used to help interpret the data, but they can also be used to help rank the features 
that are most relative to the predictive model. We can demonstrate this with a small example. Recall that our contrived data set has a thousand examples with 10 input variables, five of which are redundant and five of which are important to the outcome. We can use feature importance scores to help select the five variables that are relevant and only use them as inputs to the predictive model. First, we're going to split the data set into training and testing sets and then train the model in the training data set, make predictions on the test data set, and evaluate the results using classification accuracy. You're going to use the logistic regression model as your predictive model. This provides a baseline for comparison when you remove some of your features using feature importance scores. The complete example for evaluating a logistic regression model and using all the input features on our synthetic data set is listed on screen. When we execute the code, we run our logistic regression model on the training data set and evaluate it on the test data set. In this example, you can see that the model achieved a classification accuracy of around 84.55% using all the features on the data set. Given that we created the data set with five informative features, we would expect better performance or the same results with half the number of input variables. We could use any of the feature importance scores outlined above, but in this case, we're going to use feature importance scores provided by random forests. We're going to use the select from model class to define both the model we wish to calculate importance scores on, the random forest classifier in this case, and the number of features to select, which is five in this case. You could fit the feature selection method on the training data set. This will calculate the important scores that are going to be used to rank all the input features. You can then apply this method as a transform to select a subset of the five most important features from the data set. This transform will be applied to the training data set and the test data set. When we tie all this together, the complete example for a random forest feature important scores for feature selection is shown on screen. Executing the code first performs feature selection on the data set, then fits and evaluates the logistic regression model as before. In this case, you can see that the model achieves the same performance on the data set, although with half the number of input features. As expected, the feature important scores calculated by random forest allowed us to accurately rank the input features and delete those that weren't relevant to the target variable. 